little scoops. Oh, you better be excited for little scoops because we're on the internet. Hold on, here he comes. Oh, dear. Uh, Hello, it's me, Will Scoops. I love podcasting with my friends. Uh, oh, it's God. so much fun. And, do you like it more with your friends or your enemies? <laughs> <laughs> I kicked him out of the way. Now it's just me. Hello. Hi. And welcome Hi. to, I didn't change it again, episode 146, I think. Yeah. Of the Gamer yeah, Podcast. Right. The mostly bi-weekly video game podcast where we sip delicious bevs, discuss video games, and don't make snap decisions that decide the fate of all humanity based on our past traumas. Oh, like the end of Mass Effect 3? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 on this episode of the Game Brew Podcast, we ask the question, has your palate grown more refined? Uh, but first, it's time for the, the brew part of our thing. Um, Chris is getting a beer, so I'm going to tell you what I'm drinking this week. Uh, <laughs> um, me personally, I got uh, Yards, you know, Yards Brewery, you guys, Yards, yeah, Yards. Um, I did, uh, I got Out they have Philly, yes, yeah, it's in uh, it's a Philly brewing company, but they had they made a pack of beers called a Rumble Pack, and everything mm. is uh, everything's like eight bit. This love one's that. called Star Jockey. I love it's a that. Galaxy Hop Hazy IPA. If you can see the label, it's I like very, that a lot. It's very cool. It's very cool. Um, but that's the, yeah. I'll, I haven't drank it yet, but let's see. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's hazy. I think I like that. It's got a nice fruity texture on it, so I'm gonna give that a. You've got a nice fruity texture on you, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, uh, so let's. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, there's the a soundboard. The soundboard has come away. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, it's really good. I actually really like well, this a lot. Is it like a like a juicy boy? Is it like a hoppy boy? No, it's juicier. It's a hop hazy IPA. So it's definitely okay, juicier. But it's hazy. Okay. Nice. But I could I could drink this. This is like a this is a quite. On the, on the chuggability level of quite chuggable, I think. Very nice. Is what I'm going to give this. Yeah, I probably would like that a lot. I'll have to keep my eye out for mm -hmm. the rumble pack. I have a few more to drink from this, too, as we're going. But uh, if you do the Konami code with your tongue, does anything happen? Oh, let me try. <laughs> Start. Um,. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have unlimited lives. Cool. Oh my god! <laughs> let me, all I'm right, let's stab that's, myself that's with it. the sword and see what happens. That's all you have to do. Okay. <laughs> <give me one laughs> <of these. laughs> Up is just bleeding. He's bleeding. Uh, all right, but but quite chuggable. Uh, Chris, what are what are you sipping on? Well, it is St. Patty's Day weekend, so I'm oh, doing right. Guinness Blonde brewed in Baltimore, which nice. they very clearly show you that it is in fact from maryland um, um you know i mean I, I feel like guinness blonde is like one of those that i don't drink it often but i do enjoy it when i do but i can't do too much of it what what is a guinness blonde it's a blonde ale is that what it is mm -hmm. okay uh, yeah so it's got like it's got like some some sourness to it almost um mm. and like earthiness to it it's not particularly hoppy um it's like a heavier pilsner almost like okay if in in flavor um yeah, it's 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 good but yeah i couldn't drink a ton of them i don't think okay so like i think like 12 is good for me and i'm I'm good for a while guinness blonde okay so so you're not gonna drink it but what's the chuggability level that's what we, i mean it's pretty chuggable i mean it's 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 it's, it's for saint patty's day so it's so okay. very yeah, very. very. I mean, and what's cool is that uh, Guinness Blonde is only made in Baltimore, I believe. Yeah. I was going to say, it's, I don't think it's a, a not a particularly Irish beer. I mean, it is because it's by Guinness. Well, in Baltimore. In Baltimore. And, and before and before the, the Baltimore Listen, was made. I don't know what I don't know what the ethnicity of the or the background is of the people brewing the beer at the Baltimore factory. <laughs> Maybe That's a good point. They just skip it, in Irishmen. <laughs> they only hire people with red hair. It's like <laughs> it's like uh, it's like Ellis Island in the eighteen in the eighteen hundreds. Just Irishmen coming in left and right. Um, yeah. 
Uh, Ian, are you having a delicious H two O based beverage? I am. I mean, this is uh, this is a grapefruit Lacroix La Pomplemousse for Pumple those Moose. of you uh, yes. francophiles out there. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> you're having some Lacroix with the boys, huh? I am. I I modify my Lacroix though. So this isn't a standard issue. I actually knock the bubbles out of it because it uh, it makes my stomach hurt if I don't. I really, to be honest with everybody, I I don't like. I basically don't drink anymore because <gasps> not because of any like moral predilection to drinking, but just because of my my system can't handle it. Yeah, this tummy. So. My, listen, <clears throat> your tum tum. Same. Yeah. So do you like pre crack all of yours and just leave them open in the fridge? No, it's a it's a very <laughs> I've perfected the art of pouring from like four feet above <laughs> the vessel, which is why which is why the, the size of the vessel is, is remains important. important. But yes. okay. it is it is still uh you're it making is still it is still <laughs> it is still <laughs> but you're making millennials proud as still drinking out of uh the the what's it called? The jars, the, the mason jar. Yeah. yeah. Mason Always jars. pickle. This this is a an honest to goodness pickle jar. Before this, it had my mother's pickles in it, so it counts. Ooh, delicious! What kind? Like just like normal like cucumber pickles or like other, other yeah cu- pickles. Cu- cu- cucumber pickles. But uh, I love these kind of pickles because they're you know my mom's pickles. But mm-hmm. um, I had Marianne try one, and she I was the closest I've ever seen her barfing because of food. Oh, uh, really? Closest to come to barfing. Uh, <laughs> she didn't actually barf. Because it was, it was that mess. bad? <laughs> I love, they're like super vinegary and also tart and also spicy and also okay. salty. If there's like anything my family does, it so is. they're like excessive. Spices like, to the excess. extreme. Yes, yeah. Excess. Yeah. Getcha. Like, it's like, boy, you want something that's pickled? This is pickled, man. It's, they uh, yeah. they they counteract the uh, the... The typical white people with no with no uh, seasoning business. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, we're not we're not about British style flavoring whatsoever. Okay. Mm, mm. Gotta nice. love that British style flavoring. Uh, what's it taste like? Dirt and meat. That's it. <laughs> there you go. This, but I, I could have sworn there's some vegetables in there. No, nope, they just taste like dirt. Potatoes. Not nope, taste like dirt. <laughs> We got a lot of potatoes at the store today. It was two sacks of potatoes for the price of one sack of potatoes, so we got all potatoes. Oh, that's it potatoes. Was, they had to get rid of the, all those potatoes. I bet cabbage was cheap too. <laughs> there was the uh, corned beef. Actually, the corned beef brisket was pretty uh, was pretty inexpensive, but we didn't get that because. Oh man, yeah, I usually stock up because I like having it later in the year. Do you remember that time when I did like five Irish car bombs on one of our uh, I do our mm-hmm. uh, St. Patty's Day podcast? Yep. Um, that's I tell that story to people whenever they're like, "Hey, you want to do an Irish car bomb?" I'm like, no, no. thank you. <laughs> you I'm learned done. your lesson. Never I've, again. I've grown as a person uh, and have decided <laughs> not to do those anymore. Um, but uh, that's the part of the beverage part of of the brew part of the podcast. I will never we talk, talk about. about it again until next time. Until the next time. Um, <laughs> but now we're going to talk about the game part. Mm. Um, so we're going to talk about things that we're playing. Um, I'm going to... St- uh, what? Things that we're playing. I've, I've made a very... Comprehensive I, list. Comprehensive, but Every game concise. that you... Since like, the last time you, you were on the podcast, every yeah. game. It's, oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and I'll just start with you then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, okay. So, should I include board games or not include board? Sure, games? Oh, yeah. Everything. If it's a game, okay. play it. Okay. Uh, I play tag. The t- <laughs> tag. <laughs> tag. Freeze tag. Different than regular tag. You know, I like that a lot better. Uh, Sorry. Two Sorry. truths and a lie. Uh, <laughs> it's a classic. Let me tell you all about it. Um, no. So I um we're just getting to the my D group is just getting to the end of lost minds it's been super fun mm-hmm. so i'm like kind of prepping tags and links to whatever the next thing is gonna be i'm keeping them vague because nice. i don't know what i want to do to and or with them <laughs> next, gotcha next oh, so journey you're, so you're dming mm-hmm. yeah oh, no nice. i've been dming for like a year now oh that's awesome i didn't <sighs> know that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Love it's it. been super fun. Um, all my little babies, my little babies, all grown up and DMing games. <laughs> okay, 
Not your baby dad. So hey, listen, uh, I, we we played one of the first. I mean, I know one of the first D and D things we did was like I was still before we did the podcast. It was like you and Will and Chris, and I forget what we were doing, but you were all like we tried to do it over Google Google Chat or something like that. Google Meet. Google Meet, and it didn't work good. But like we tried it, and yeah, it was we did like, the first encounter against the uh, those goblins. Oh, that's Google, right. Google yeah. Meet really did a hard pivot after that to the uh, <laughs> to the cow industry. Yeah, that <laughs> things got weird. weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, oh but anyway, uh, cool. yeah, awesome. DMing has been really fun. Um, and I th- and I was worried about the group when we started, but they've gelled really nicely. And what's just, what's the group? Uh, so it's uh, my brother my wife they have to have fun so i have a built-in audience there. right boom uh you like your your your, uh, your 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 style of uh comedy yeah uh <laughs> carrie who's been on the nice. podcast a few times yes uh-huh. of course uh her husband chad nice uh allison and fee Oh, that's awesome. Wow, that's a that's a six person group. Also that's a big a, group. Yeah, that's awesome. What? It's a, we started as five and then and then Chad was like, Can I join too? And I was like, That's yeah. fun. Can't say no. Sure can. <laughs> Can't say no did, to uh, that. Did uh what has there been like a particularly big or fun moment that stands out? I mean, there's all kinds of fun moments. I don't like it's it's hard to, for me to pick out a particular one, but they're always like every time there's like a slight challenge with climbing up or down something, <laughs> immediate <laughs> failure. I have no idea why it's so hard for them to climb very climbable things, but just it's hard. Oh, uh, that's great. There's been a, like poetry has really played quite a role mm. in our campaign, oh, cool. in spite of the fact that we don't have a bard. It's like. Nice. It's like kind of the running joke. Uh, <laughs> there's a there's the bugbear who is a poet who they like sort of like ran into and then saved from a certain encounter who is now just like out in the world writing horrible bugbear poetry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's awesome. good. That's great. I love that. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, I mean, just all the characters are really yeah. good too. It's been really fun to watch them develop and sort of like change. Mm. It's been cool. Like Very grow cool. over time. That's nice. I'm yeah. starting a campaign next Friday for uh the one I was talking about before Chris where it's like the that took inspiration from Dungeon Crawler Carl on mm, some of the stuff. Cool. So Yeah. Um, but uh anyway, very cool. Anyway, so Dungeons and Dragons having a great time with it. I I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to stick with that particular format. Or swap to a different format and do like Pathfinder or something. I okay. Or you can even just pick and choose things. I think that's the that's the big thing now is like it's so easy to kind of just once you get it under your skin, like you've been doing it for a year. Now you could probably pick out things that you kind of like and don't like that you would want to like kind of move in. So then you don't even have to pick a like thing. You could just take things from Five E. You could take things from Pathfinder. Take things yeah. from. Make it your own. Make it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, also, in terms of tabletop stuff, playing some Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. Do you all I know about this game? I saw that. I saw that when I was yeah. looking through tabletop simulator stuff. Tell me about it. It is not something that I'd recommend for tabletop simulator. There are yeah. a lot of board games that play great on tabletop simulator. This is not one of them. Mm. Um, definitely, definitely buy a physical copy. Uh, for sure. Um, but the physical copy is great. It's it's basically like an adventure game, and you form a fellowship of mm-hmm. sorts and go romping around Middle Earth. And it's uh, you know, you'll do challenges and fight enemies and explore. And uh, it's rule set. Once you get into it, is not super complex, but there's mm-hmm. enough complexity in terms of like hand building and tech. You have you have a little deck, and you build uh, your little deck. So, so it's it. a deck builder. It's not a deck builder, but there is a deck building mechanic that features pretty Got heavily. It. Okay. Um, and uh, it's fun. I think what's really nice is the iPad in this. So mm-hmm. you have to have either a computer or an iPad running at the same time 
and it does it like picks up all the does all the math crunching in the background and auto generates random maps and enemies and encounters so you don't have to constantly be referring back to a book or some kind mm -hmm. That's cool. uh yeah it's really nice it, it takes uh, if anyone's ever played gloomhaven board game wise it's just like there's just a lot going on that's oh, yeah. not interaction like player interaction and this takes all that and puts it on the ipad so that's good that's really cool yeah very neat. um yeah i like that okay uh this is taking way too long i feel like i'm talking forever <laughs> no so it's not. good we, we i mean we we haven't heard from you in so long we want to hear more yeah so more. okay all right so here's a short list of things i've in installed and then immediately uninstalled okay we don't even I, really need to talk about that no i like that i like that as a category we should do that as a segment <laughs> <laughs> uh valorant which okay the installation process super smooth the uninstallation process <laughs> 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 i almost lost my mind <laughs> <laughs> because I think part of the problem was I installed it through Xbox Game Pass, played a little bit, and I was like, "This is just not for me." And and no, mm -hmm. you know, it's like Valorant is your thing, Gary. It seems like a good game. It's just not my game. Um, uh, went to go uninstall it, and it's anti cheat. Wouldn't uninstall. Oh God! Either with the like Microsoft tool, and it also wouldn't let me uninstall it manually. Like just go in and scrub the files and call it a day. Oh, so I gosh. had to do some like weird workarounds to get the stupid program off my computer. Um, so not ideal. Nice, uh, nice, very cool. Easy anti cheat is not easy whenever you have to take it off of. Somebody. Well, it's not easy anti cheat. That's the thing. Different? It's it's Riot's own proprietary oh, client. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. Not great. Yeah um citizen sleeper which I, is like a oh sorry yeah no I've, I've seen it i it has such like such good reviews in the gaming press i and was then, like this is a thing i'll like yeah not really right no, it's, no it's, it wasn't. it's it's like an rpg sort of thing right it's just like a storytelling yeah. sort of thing it's almost like if you took like a narrative game, mm -hmm. like a relationship simulator. Okay. And uh, what was that movie with Harrison Ford in it? Oh, Star uh, Wars. <laughs> Indiana Jones. <laughs> Blade Runner. <laughs> oh, Blade Runner. I, w I was going to say Air Force One. Get off my plane. <laughs> the Fugitive. Yeah. I didn't kill my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um that's a pretty good harrison ford impression you just have to get really low in your voice and just say things Gravel. like you're mad <laughs> i i uh i used to really like air force one i still really like air force one man gary that's, that's uh that's when i realized gary oldman was the bomb that's true that's He's true great. Love gary. anyway it's anyway. It's, <laughs> it's like a narrative sort of uh yeah. neon shadow runnery kind of situation Cyber it just funky. didn't yeah it didn't click with me uh and it and i think it's maybe i don't know again not my kind of game and then this game called barrow trauma which i was super excited about barrow trauma and mm. i still think could be really cool but unless you're playing it with other people it really is not worth picking up um, oh. so it's kind of like it's kind of like a bridge simulator similar to um ftl kind of it's got a little bit of ftl uh yeah. stuff in it but it's very multiplayer focused okay. uh and it doesn't care about your feelings mm -hmm. and uh it's about running a submarine instead of a spaceship and that's like it's a cool it's a really neat premise yeah and i think with the right group of people it could be an absolutely incredible experience but really steep learning curve right off the bat and i just don't necessarily have a group of people who would want to be into that right now? It's so. yeah, it is giving me claustrophobia <laughs> looking at screenshots of it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I can I can understand it. But but yeah, it looks a lot like uh a lot like faster faster than the FTL. It's uh very interesting. But very cool idea. Now yeah. here are the things that I've actually been playing. Okay. <laughs> uh first of all, I played the Shadows of Doubt demo during Steam Next Fest. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. I am so excited for this game. I can't I think definitely my most anticipated of 2023 at the moment. Um, really? Interesting. So it's it's basically like a gumshoe simulator. Uh, yeah. kind of a 
Minecrafty aesthetic. Uh, also got kind of Blade Runner vibes to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just it's like a mystery simulator. So like, there's a murder. Okay, how are we gonna solve the murder? Well, you're a detective. Go use your fingerprint scanner. Look through their trash. Climb in through their vents and search through their desk to see if they have any notes. Oh, the notes tell you where they work. Gotta go to their place to work and see if there's anything on their home computer. Oh, their home computer or their work computer talks about how like they're in some kind of uh, like weird sex ring with their other coworker. <laughs> Time to go check them out. And that's like that's the game. It's awesome. That wow. sounds really cool. Actually, that is really. I, I'm looking at screenshots of this right now, and yeah, it looks like yeah. it's yeah, it's a detective stealth game. That's very yeah. cool. That's and it, is it is it all uh like procedurally generated stuff? No, it's oh. it's well, it's not all procedurally generated. Yeah. It's, some of it is it's sort of a mix of bespoke and procedural. Oh, okay. Cool. cool. Um yeah, this is this is a game where if you had to describe it with music, it would be like boom. So like, like uh, the, uh, the naked uh, gun, frame, or like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, like when yeah. they go into Eddie Valiant's like, oh, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great. Um, uh, cool, that's yeah. awesome. That looks, uh, yeah, sci-fi. That looks really city. cool. I just yeah. added it to my wish list. That's real cool. Um, a game called Duskers. Are you all aware of Duskers? Duskers. D U S K E R S. Yep. No, but this looks like a game that you would like. It it is a game that I would like. So yeah. basically, you're ordering drones around mostly with console commands. Yep. And it's a, a roguelike setup uh in terms of uh working that and it and it's like it's also got a very like lo fi mm-hmm. uh sort of console that you're looking at most of the time mm-hmm. and it makes all the like bips and boops from from old school and there's like you know you can hear the computers and stuff running in the background mm-hmm. uh it 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 ends up being kind of a horror puzzler okay game yeah which is, is great i love me. it it's super super fun um am i good at it no <laughs> but i but i do enjoy it uh <laughs> Nice. <laughs> my, my only complaint is that I wish that you could save in the middle of a mission and come back in the middle of a mission because sometimes I'll get Did into it, one and it takes me like 40 minutes to do a level. Maybe okay. just slow. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. A lot of these games where it's like you have to like make make like plans and, and, and like map out things and stuff take a really long time to do, which is kind mm-hmm. of what keeps me away from them. Is because well, also like, like learning how to do like the console command stuff too. They, I will say about this game more than any other console command game I've played, they do a really nice job of ramping you into it. Um, because at the beginning, there's not a whole lot of complexity. Mm. Uh, so the, the console commands part, they do a good job of ramping you into. It's not hard to learn how to play at all. It is hard to learn to play competently. Okay. I probably the first three or four runs that I did, I was like first ship dead, first ship dead, first ship dead, <laughs> first ship dead. Um, which was frustrating. And then you're like, okay, 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 okay. Time to turn on the brain and think through this a little bit. And that part of it's really satisfying. Wow. This won a lot of awards in 2016. In 2016, there it yeah. is. <laughs> Working through my seven-year backlog, friends. Hey, it happens. But no, yeah, it looks like I, I looked at it, and the first thing I thought was like, "This kind of looks like Dwarf Fortress." And then, uh, and then I was like, "But it's not." But it it has that sort of ASCII sort yeah. of look to it. So very yeah. neat, very neat. And then Kiwi, are you all aware of a game called Kiwi? Kiwi, K E Y W E, I believe is how it's spelled. K E Y W E. This is an adorable game where you and your buddy, pal, friend, significant other uh-huh. play kiwis. A kiwi. Yeah. A the kiwi. Little, Got little it. kiwi birds that you uh-huh. can customize. And you, you solve puzzles together. It's a co op like, puzzle That's game. Cute. I love that. It oh my God. It's so cute. Fucking rocks, too. The puzzles are super fun. Uh, they're made well there's it's like a good combination of difficulty and just you know like here's a puzzle you can solve go have fun solving it some side quests the customization is hilarious 
uh, because Kiwis are adorable. Yeah. And they really do a nice job of bringing sort of like this New Zealander flavor to the game. <laughs> to what it it's, is. It's so much fun. Would strongly recommend to anyone who has a, a friend or partner who likes puzzle things. Nice. Yeah, this looks great. This looks like like adorable chaos, and I'm yeah. here for it. <laughs> you know, I'm down. Uh, um, I'm probably about halfway through Wo Long Fallen Dynasty. Are either Ooh, of you playing that? Do you? Yeah. What What do you think about that game? I I really like it. I really like it. Yeah. I haven't played Sekiro, so I think that's okay. a huge gap in terms of my experience and people who have played Sekiro, Sekiro or Neo. Well. Both. I have played Neo. So this game is like Neo and Sekiro had a baby, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because exactly. it's by the people who made Neo. Right. Yes. Team Ninja. Um the Ninja Gaiden people too from yeah. from the, the Halcyon <laughs> The Halcyon Xbox days. days. Oh, yeah. those were the days. Um <laughs> I really, really like it. I wish it wasn't optimized so poorly. It is very bad. I try. I installed it on my computer, and it just didn't work. Like mm-hmm. that, I like tried to put the graphics settings where I normally would work, use them, and it was just like, nope, <laughs> not gonna <Yep>. do it. <laughs> I had to go and like deactivate certain drivers in my device settings to that's, get it to that's work bad. properly. That's not. That's not what you want. It's not what no. you want. That's why I installed it on my Xbox instead of on my computer because I was like, that'll be easier because then it then it does it does it all automatically. And it has to work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, um outside of that, I really I I think it's wonderful. I'm having a great time with it. I think it's I think it's good. I I've gotten a little bit further into it. I think I've been spoiled by Sekiro a bit because I'm yeah. like, this seems very easy. Like I'm playing and I'm like, this is very easy. And so I think that's the only thing that's different for me, but I like that it's a combination of stuff. I feel like I'm playing like a really like messed up version of Dynasty Warriors anytime I'm mm-hmm. playing it because it is the romance of the three kingdoms, uh, mm-hmm. but with demon dragons and stuff. Demon dragons and I stuff. What, what was the last boss you fought? The last boss I fought was I killed a big old boar demon boar guy Mm -hmm, that was mm -hmm. chasing me around i killed him and then something else after that and i couldn't i can't remember what it what it was but uh but yeah don't worry about spoiling things for me but uh but i (laughs) i I, it's you know it's i I don't know if i'm gonna go back to it basically i will say that from there it gets more challenging okay got it because the first boss was like the first boss was very nice perfectly like really perfectly yeah, balanced it, and it, super and it fun really taught you how to do like it was like <laughs> oh i have to do these things in order to beat the enemies like it was a yeah. it was a learning boss so i was like okay i got it and then then the boss battles kind of yeah for a little minute merp merp just but lots come of back. big animals nice very cool and then a bunch of marvel snap gotta love it mm-hmm. have you all played any marvel yeah snap? I, I played it for a little bit while I was pooping. Now I just play solitaire. <laughs> Back to solitaire. I'm just, I'm just good at solitaire. <laughs> I, I like I like Marvel. Good Snap. at being alone. No. <laughs> uh, and then I mean, uh, and then recently I've gotten into Battlefield nineteen 19- or 1942, 2042. Oh, yeah? okay. Which is in great shape right now. If you have Game Pass, go download and play this game. It is super fun. They fixed it. Whatever it was that was broken when it came out, it's fixed. <laughs> it's fixed it's now. Great. It's Battlefield as it should be. The weapons are balanced well. The maps are awesome. It's not buggy at all. Uh, well, that's good. It makes sense in terms that used to not make any sense in terms of the like classes. They were trying to do like an Overwatch kind of like your character uh, is your class sort of gotcha. setup. It was yeah. Like, yeah. But then they were like, okay, never mind. We we didn't mean that. We the were wrong. Make sense again. <laughs> sorry. We're sorry. Sorry. Backpedal. Backpedal. Go backwards. And it's really good. Oh my god! This parachute is an upset. Uh, <laughs> but cool. that's it okay that's it that's not it but there's He's, there's more but but there there's more but it's but that's where we'll cut you off for right now yeah um, good thank you but that's uh <laughs> but but uh but very cool yeah i'll have to pick cool. up 20, been busy 42 <laughs> yeah or it's or it's been a while <laughs> or it's been a while and you know you jump on and off those things. Yep. there's been a while 
Um, so, uh, Chris, what have what have you been playing recently? Uh, I've been messing around a little bit with uh, uh, Pillars of Eternity again. So I played this nice. a little bit uh, before, like apparently five years ago, according to Steam. Um, sorry, six years ago, according six to Steam. Six years ago. Um, and I had recently started playing Pathfinder Kingmaker, mm-hmm. and there was something about it that I was like, not like I like the the combat in pathfinder was like just a little bit too fast um and i wanted it to be a little more turn-based whereas with pillars of eternity um it's a little bit easier to like pause and do stuff and then see that play out then pause and do stuff right um yeah so i've been enjoying that and uh i mean it's 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 a a good solid uh D D style video game um yeah I think it was made by Obsidian. It was from a Kickstarter. Has some really good voice actors. Um, mm-hmm. So it's just, yeah, it's a fun game. Um, if you're and into a, CRPGs and a big old piratey sequel too. Yeah. Oh yeah, I haven't played. Yeah. Uh, I, I did just did just recently buy that during the Steam sale that's going on right now. Nice. Uh, but I'm waiting to play that until I finish the first one. That's good because the first one ends and then it picks right up at the beginning of Dreadfire. So exactly. Yeah. Boom. Um. Has anyone played uh, Take Take Down Tear Down? Oh yeah, I love Tear Down. Is it worth picking up for like twelve or thirteen dollars? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, it is. It's very satisfying. Um, also, it makes you think hard, but not in literal ways because it is about like it's about breaking stuff. It's about stealing things or breaking things in very specific ways to make things work. Um, or setting up things for you to be able to do things. I it, that's a really vague description of it, but like there are sometimes where it's like, okay, you have to steal this car from this guy, but in order to do that, you also have to s- stop the alarm from going off, or make it so that whenever you steal the car, the alarm is going to go off. So you have to get it out as quickly as possible. But it's in his garage, and we don't have any keys, so you have to like blow up walls make things move around get into yeah. different ways make paths um it's it's very it is very cool i enjoy it a lot and it is like that kind of very much like shadow city or shadow uh something shadow the shadow thing run? You, no the thing you were talking about before the oh, shadow, shadows of doubt shadows of doubt it's that same art style mm. which was like kind of pixely almost but yes not, but yeah. minecraft yeah minecraft but bigger um Voxels, 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 machinals. Um, uh, speaking of uh, (laughs) Pillars of Eternity, Matt Mercer, yeah, all those voice actors. Um, senior Mercer, uh, but nice, cool. Anything else, Chris? Oh, that's really been it, yeah. Nice, cool. Um, I finished The Last of Us Part One, uh, because the show or the game, but both um the at the same well at the same time actually i played like when the last episode of season one aired then i was playing through and i finished the i finished the end of like that so i and hannah was there so so she was like does it end the same way i was like yeah exactly pretty much wow. <laughs> so awesome. um so like it was it was kind of interesting to see the comparisons of the two thi- of the two like the show and the game and where they like where they differed, but also how the majority of the game and the show is exactly the same because Neil Druckmann really was like, he basically made, wrote a movie or wrote a show and then made a video game out of it. Yeah. You know, so. Oh, in terms of the making of the last of us. Yeah. The like, game. The, yeah. Like the game, it was basically like he made, he made like a show and then was like, okay, here's the game parts of the show. But it's like, it works so it worked so good. Like the show was great, and I still playing the game. I'm like it's still still really good. So I've played all. Of, I've played the first one. I've played The Last of Us. I played The Last of Us Remastered. Now I've played The Last of Us Part One. Um, so you're welcome. Take all my money. Uh, there really is no The Last of Us. It's all just like this this version of us. This version. This version of us. Um, Hannah was like. Uh, Hannah was like. Uh, there since they're making another season. I was like. She was like, are you going to play Last of Us Part 2 now since you finished Last of Us Part 1? I was like, You're gonna yeah, wait. but I don't, I, I kind of don't want to because I want to wait for, I don't want to ruin like the big plot points in the beginning of Last of Us Part 2 uh, that kind right. of make it, you know, really good. So 
Um, but I mean, I will say the last was part one, as far as like, was it worth it to get that um, when I've already played like the last of us and the last of us remastered mm-hmm. um yeah it was great they like redid really? it. yeah i mean it was like it really felt like like everything was familiar but i wasn't but i wasn't playing the same game like some level does layouts changed uh all the cutscenes were like revamped that was basically like they took the last of us part two stuff and then just said okay we're gonna make the last of us part one but with all the stuff for last of us part two and then it just kind of it just kind of works. It's just made it a better game again. It it just works. It just it just works. It just works. <laughs> like it's, at some point, like the the time continuums are going to merge, and we're going to yeah. be in trouble. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah, games right. that are being updated and games that are being remade are just like slowly becoming the same. Like dwarf uh, space dwarves what is this game actually called um, uh, oh deep, deep rock, rock galactic, galactic deep rock, yeah. right they're gonna make a remake but it's really gonna be like deep rock galactic 2.2 oh no <laughs> yeah. i mean i think i think that's already happening with the resident <laughs> evil games they're they're we're getting closer to a singularity with all of the uh singular <laughs> <laughs> with all of the different uh because resident evil 4 rema- remake comes out next week um i'm Ooh. pretty sure or this coming week and it's getting pretty good press so yeah i, I mean i'm not surprised mean it was a good game <laughs> yeah I, yeah <laughs> i i just i don't know how to feel about all this i really i have such conflicting feelings it's i think it's interesting because and this is a, a we're gonna segue into the topics now be, with this oh, but sorry yeah. because no but that's no but that's actually great because of the way that um the way that it is is just like Resident Evil Four. There, it's a remake of it, and it's just like, but that didn't come out that long ago. Like that still feels like a modern game, you know? Just like yeah. The Last of Us Part One. I mean, okay, whoa, in, but the in, last day, the Last of Us Part One and Resident Evil Four are like ten years apart. That's true. Well, but no, though. But The Last of Us came out in twenty twelve, something like yeah, that. When did, it came out when, like the end of PS three? Yeah. When did Resident Evil come out? Resident uh, Evil Four. I feel like it came out during PS2, like end of PS2 ish. Oh God! It came out for the GameCube in 2005. That's what I'm saying. Oh God! (laughs) It's part of it's part of that disease that I have as a millennial, where I'm like 1990s. Yeah, that was like 10 years years ago. ago. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, I guess never mind. (laughs) Never mind then. But it is interesting um, because they have been releasing like these remakes of the Resident Evil games, and uh, it seems to be going well for them. Um, mostly because they kind of keep changing the way like that it's played. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with like the way that people play games now. Um, because the taste, some people would say that your taste in games, like people's taste in games and like the type of games that people enjoy has changed over the years. So I kind of want to examine that a little bit and just kind of see like what I want you to think about something for a second. Okay. So close your eyes. Anything I want. A- anything you want except it's going to be this specific thing so close your eyes <laughs> and, think about, <laughs> and think about last year okay 2022 it was april of 2022 okay um what were you what were you playing at that time a year ago what do you think you were playing should i say or is, is no i mean i mean tell me i mean open it up now that i mean around played. around this time last year i remember it was right after um Total War Warhammer 3 had come out and Elden Ring had come out. So I was hitting those pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, too, it would have been Elden Ring and a lot of Fortnite because Marianne was super into a Fortnite about a year ago. <laughs> and Valheim. Yeah. Valheim, oh, yeah. Valheim. That's right. Valheim did come out. That was, that was very thing. cool. You know, they're doing a remake. Of Val, <laughs> it's not even full release yet. It's just called Val. It's called Valheimer. It's just more, more Valheimina. More Val. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, okay. So now, I want you to think about what. So would you say that like from now to then, like a year a year ago, do you think that your taste in the games that you've played has changed, or are those kind of still the same things? Like you're just kind of the a, same, a variation of what you have liked. Hmm. That's a really hard question, Dan. I feel like I feel like my taste in games is so all over the place that 
that it's like hard for me to give an answer but but what i I think in a certain way yes like i think a year ago i was much more concerned about like you know what is what is this company's impact in gaming on general like are they doing a good job with representation Mm -hmm. what's the connection between the art and the artist and i think those are all, all really important questions to ask but of course I'm not necessarily so worried about them right now in this particular moment. Maybe I should be, but I think like I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty. Right. Yeah. And that's uh, if we're talking about like, right. Like a non-inclusive game built by a non-inclusive company. <laughs> right. So, so uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like we, yeah, you were, we're sort of in that point where, you know, can you, not to get into this discussion because we've had this discussion before a million times. But like, but like, can you like separate the art from? Oh my gosh, like the company, that, and that's like, and I th- and I've I have so many more thoughts on this. I was just I was just scrubbing <laughs> through this conversation again in my head the other day. <laughs> I don't want to derail. Yeah, no, that that's another. We've I think we've had like six episodes where we've talked about all this kind of stuff. So, but it's but it is interesting, right? There are some things where it's like, and it's the same thing with like Fortnite. Like I've like. Epic's not the best company in the world. No, but sure isn't. But I still, uh, but I still gotta get, I gotta get that Aaron Yeager skin whenever it comes out. I gotta do all those quests. Who for, is Aaron Yeager? Uh, from Attack on Titan. It's the new, it's the one for this uh, season. So I thought he was gonna be like a sports ball guy. No, no <sighs> sports ball guys. Um, what about you, Chris? What about your taste? Is it I mean, the same? I think roughly the same. Yeah. Okay. I'm kind of in a rut. Uh. <laughs> I would say though, like if you had asked me, like what was I playing ten years ago? Uh, well, hold on, space. don't don't okay. don't get ahead of okay. me. Don't get okay. ahead of me. Okay, okay. okay. Because guess okay. what? I want you to think about five years ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I don't want you even to think about it because I'm just going to tell you. So Ooh. five years ago, Dan's got the receipts. Um, actually, I'm going to go back even further. I'm going to go to six years. So at the very okay. start of the Game Brew podcast, here's what. Chris, you were playing Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm-hmm. This okay. is six years ago. Ian, you were playing Event Zero, Dishonored Ev- 2. Oh, yeah. Event Zero was great. Elder Scrolls Legends, Overwatch, uh, uh, Diablo 3, and Astroneer. So continuing, you're like, I'm playing every game under the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so are there any games on that list that surprised you that I was like, oh, yeah, I was really... I was playing that or i was really into that at the time i mean i think you heard it in my voice that event zero for me is that game and i miss that genre and i always think i always think i should go play some of that and then i don't so event zero was not exactly a walking simulator but it was kind of like here's a space go explore solve puzzles there's a mystery do the mystery thing right yeah and uh, do the mystery uh, so, so in that way it's similar to things like um gone home uh everybody's gone to the rapture uh deliver uh, us the moon right tacoma that kind of thing and i've played firewatch i played a couple of those i haven't played all of them but the ones i've played i always end up walking away thinking like this is something that is a unique game in the game space i think uh walking simulators as they are unjustly called get a really bad Mm -hmm. rap um they're, they should be called first person narrative games because it's really what they are. And I think uh, it's something that I'm always like, I should go do that. But then I end up playing, you know, like a live service game or a, a Schusty, Schusty McShootson. It's Schusten and Sh- Schusty McShustener. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but or Chris, Rocket League. Rock, or yes, Rocket right. League. But, um, I feel like. I mean, I still like those style games of like Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, assassin's creed mm-hmm. um that, that sort of thing i just feel like like i mean i feel like i just recently played one with um hogwarts legacy yeah mm. um right. kind of a very similar style game um and i do i do enjoy those but um i do kind of get bored with them after a little bit right um more so than i used to and i think maybe that's because i'm more cognizant of the time that i have yes so so like if I get bored with something, I, I don't want to try to like force myself to push through it anymore. I'm just mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm, I'm I'm done with this. And this is kind of like what we talked about 
on the last episode, I think, where we right. were like, when when are you finished with a game? Is it when you get to the end or is it when you just you feel like you're done with it? Um, right. And that's and that's I think. But I also think that, Chris, examining your like just watching you, your your game evolution over time, I do think that you kind of moved back into because you always whenever we started the podcast stuff like that you used to talk about how you used to play like these like strategy games how you used to do forex stuff and then you were oh, playing yeah. a lot of like fallout type things and like first person shooters and adventure games and now in the last few years you've gone really back into like the forex strategy games total war stuff and i th- yeah. and and your and all of your uh um warhammer things too and i'm right. just like I, I think you've just become more big brain sort of oh good to see yeah. you happy again Chris. You know, like, <laughs> well oh and God. like yeah and like that's what i was going to sp- say like comparing and i'm not going to go there yet but um i i do think you're right i think i have kind of switched over to that like if i look at my most recent like steam played it's all like crpgs and um rts's and 4x games and um, like city builders and stuff like that. Um, I haven't played like a first person shooter in a while. Can hmm. I ask you a question? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, have you played? Well, uh, have you played War Tales since the last update, Chris? Uh, I played it a little bit when uh, they made it so you could do multiplayer. And, uh, did, and you, uh, were you having fun with it? Yeah, it was fun. I bought it and I'm like, I should play this game, but I yeah. haven't played it. So okay. yeah, no, it's, it's a fun, uh, it's, it's fun, especially, I mean, like it's, it's like, uh, it's fantasy XCOM. Mm-hmm. So I like that, but like with like an open world instead of like structured missions, like you go to one mission, you go to another. Can I tell you that I've played, I've tried to play the XCOM games a few times and I never, I just can never get into it. Oh man. You know, like I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is my, maybe, I don't know. Maybe my brain is too dumb and I need constant flashing lights, you know, you know, (laughs) constant small feedback loop, I think is what my brain needs in order to do stuff. Well, is that, is that what you think it is? I don't know. Why do you think you don't like it? I don't know. Cause I think it's, I, I think I get bored. I think I get bored of waiting and like, like knowing something bad's going to happen or like something like not working the right way. Mm. I, th- I think because I looking at my stuff. So like a year ago, I think I was playing. Um, oh God. What was I playing? Probably. I think the same things I'm playing now, like Fortnite and call of duty and uh, like whatever was on X- game pass and like all of the, like fall guys, like things that are like, it's happening stuff is happening and i'm it's, and it's always happening and it's manual yeah it's not I'm doing it's not strategy it. yeah. yeah because anytime and i think that's why i really like being a dungeon master in dungeons and dragons rather than playing a pa- player character it's because i i think so i think i have a control i think i'm control I say think, more dan i think i might i think i might have a pro i think i might have an issue here well like the control yeah. as in like you need to be the one I think who's... I, like I need to be like doing things constantly. Like I always need to be. I feel this way when I work too. I like I can't be not doing something whenever I don't. I have downtime. I can't just relax. <laughs> I have to mm. be thinking about the next thing I have to do. And I think that translates into my gaming sometimes, where it's like, even if it's a relaxed sort of game, I'm always thinking about the next thing to do or like the achievements and stuff. Um, I think Jeez. also yeah. Six years ago, I was playing Stardew Valley, which is also a nice. thing. Which that, you know, you always kind of have to think about, okay, what am I going to do tomorrow? Okay, I did this. I did these crops. I did that, those crops. I'm going to go to the cave. Then we're going to do this. And then we're going to do that. And I think that's like constantly thinking and, but also doing it. I don't know that, but that might be me overthinking stuff. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Analyze me, Captain. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think there is an element of wanting to be in control. Like you, you do like to be the one in a group of people, especially kind of calling the shots. Uh, I do. Th- th- this is, there's nothing wrong with this. Oh no, I trust me. Um, I understand. 
<laughs> I know all of the I know all of the things. But that's but I guess what I'm trying to square then is then like that seems like you should love XCOM. XCOM is all about being in control. Like little man over here, go do yes the and, thing. Yes and no, but because I, I was kind of thinking about this while you were talking about this, Dan. Like there's with XCOM, like the feeling of when you lose one of your dudes sucks. And like mm. sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. And yeah. that's kind of the point of that game is to make you feel that. Um like feel that's a connection point. and then lose mm. that person. And then it's like, you know. Um so like I, I kind of get that a little bit with XCOM too. Like sometimes you lose people in XCOM and it's legitimately not your fault. Yeah. The game is just like, nope. Yep, nope. Fuck you. Nope. Yeah. We're just all going to decide to throw grenades at this one guy. <laughs> fuck that guy. In- <laughs> we don't know why. It's just what we're doing. We are computers. We don't know what's happening. <laughs> or we know everything that's happening. Birds aren't real. Um, okay. <laughs> um, okay. But the... Uh, so now I want to let's go back a little bit because I, I, I we're not going to talk about me anymore because I got uncomfortable with all that. Uh, just <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, it's it's I'm completely comfortable with it. I know I have a I know I have a control problem. Yeah, but I, why? <laughs> why? Let's yeah. dig into that. Uh, why do I have a control problem? I guess it's because my my mom my dad never loved no, me. My- <laughs> Dan, I know you want us to go on, but we're going to stop and talk about why you have control problems. We're not going to listen to what you have what you want to do here. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, well, I do want to do this. I want you to think about 10 years ago, 2013. Dan, there's something I need to say to you first. Okay, what is that? It's not your fault. Don't don't do this it's to not me. Your fault. It's not your fault, Dan. It's not your fault. <laughs> don't do this to me, man. Come yeah, on. I know it's not my fault. No, um, God. No, God, please, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> Um, so anyways, I, 10 yeah, years ago. 10 years ago. <laughs> so 10 years ago, it's it's 2013. What is I it? I just gotten my Xbox. I guess technically I got it later this year, but like, I was playing so much Battlefield. So much Battlefield. <laughs> In 2013. Nice. Yeah. What do you think you were playing in 2013? Battlefield. And maybe WoW. Oh, what? Okay. What was, what was my, what was going on in my life in 2013? You were um, in Cali, no, baby. No, I wasn't. I, oh, you hadn't gone out No, yet. you were, oh, you were still in Harrisonburg? I think so. I, I think, think you I was were working still in Harrisonburg. for Harrisonburg. So I was also playing Battlefield on PlayStation. Okay. Um, and, mm, Battlefield oh, was and so you good. know, you know what else I was playing on PlayStation? Was that adorable puppet game? I'm trying to remember now. Oh, uh, with Sockboy? Yeah, Sockboy World. Sackboy. Oh, my God. Sackboy, not Sockboy. Sackboy. Oh, uh, sock. sock. No, it's Sockboy. <laughs> what are you, planet. some sort of Little Sockboy? <laughs> <laughs> Little Big Planet, which was great. Like a really wholesome little platformer. Yeah. I've uh, played one of the, the more recent ones, the Sackboy Adventures or whatever it's called. Uh, and it's fun. Those are always fun. I like that genre too, the like physicsy platformer games. Mm. Yeah, those are yeah. those are fun. Those are fun. And did you get? Do you have you have do you have a PS Five, Ian, or you have a PS Four? I have Chris's PS Four. Okay, because yeah. I recently got a PS Five, and it comes with Astro's Playroom. Ooh, that's which actually is, really good. Which is like low key fire. Like it is an amazing like game that just comes with the console. It's like it teaches you how to use all the buttons on the controller, but also it's like physicsy, and you have to do things in it. And it's an a- it's an action platformer, and it's really cute and fun. And there's all like <laughs> these little guys in there that are like all your favorite PlayStation game characters. Yeah. So, uh, so, what other games released around then? That's what I'm I'm looking up right now is games. Ooh, that came uh, out. Assassin's Creed Four, I think. Oh. Uh, Guys, Black, Black Flag. Grand Theft Auto Five came out in 2013. Oh, yeah. The Last of Us came out in two thir- 2013. It did. So, uh, <laughs> the DMC, the Devil May Cry remake, came out in t- 2013. Nice. Which they immediately abandoned after that one. Um, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance came out in 2013. Oh, that game is so good. I didn't Bi- play it in 2013, but it was good. Bioshock Infinite. Uh, so good. Tomb Raider Remaster. 
Metro sure. Last Light. Oh, I was probably <laughs> playing like Borderlands 2 at this time. Oh yeah, I played a lot of Borderlands 2 around then. I was I was playing Grand Theft Auto, like primarily. Like I GT- was playing Dragon's Dogma for sure. Oh, Dragon's Dogma was awesome. Uh, yeah, I was playing. So I think 2013 Dan was very like Xbox console Dan. So I was playing things I could play on my Xbox One. Right? Yeah. Xbox. Wait, was it Xbox One at that time? Yeah. Oh uh, well, yeah. I think it came out later that year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was playing that, and I was playing like Call of Duty. I was basically anything that came out and was like a big AAA game because this was a big year for triple a titles and remaster stuff because it was like the end of end of stuff beginning of new uh yeah else. like beginning the, of new stuff the beginning end of old stuff beginning of new stuff um um yeah so i think that's it i don't think skyrim i was playing a lot of skyrim i mean we all were playing skyrim we, we, <laughs> still still am and still um, <laughs> everybody still is <laughs> Marianne can't get into Skyrim. Has That's... she tried any mods on Skyrim? <laughs> I mean, no. But there's one that gives gives every character huge boobs. Ma- man, woman. I'm, I'm sure there's dragon. more than just one that does that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. But so, do you think from then to now, like back then, would you say that you have changed drastically? in the way in like the type of video games that you or like games that you consume. I, I definitely think I have um, kind of this, what we were talking about. I think I've it, like back then I, w- I would do a lot more shooters. I would do a lot more like multiplayer shooters for sure, um, mm-hmm. which I don't really have a ton of interest in anymore. Yeah. For me, I have a lot less interest in open world games. I have less time for them. You know, GTA five was such a big thing. Um, Red dead. uh, The first one, Mm -hmm. I think probably came out in 2010, 2009, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I played both of those quite a bit. LA Noir, I played a lot of. Um, so those like sort of big open Rockstar or Rockstar adjacent open world games. Right. I just like, I have no interest in them whatsoever anymore. I think I, I it's just like too much samey samey. Yeah, I think I've I ta- I've talked about it a few times where it's like the Ubisofting of open world games makes me like it hurts my brain to like see all of these things on a map, like go open a map on a game and see like icons everywhere that show you where everything is. Like, here's this type of plant you could do. Here's where this animal is. Here's what this thing does. Here's a town in this town. There's all these different things. And it's like, it just shows you everything. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, that does, that's not, well, number one, that's not exploring. So even if I was exploring, I would feel like, you know, kind of shortchanged where it's like, Oh yeah, it's right there. I don't have to think about it. It's there. Um, but also, yeah, it's daunting. We're old. We're adults. And we have... I play video games at like 9.30 at night when <laughs> all of when I've watched all the shows that I want to watch. And right. I've already done all the work that I need to do. I don't have like two hours to explore a new region in a game. I have like an hour maybe. If I can keep my eyes open. If I can keep my eyes open. <laughs> you know? Oh, Sleepy Dan. <laughs> That's why they, they call, call him Sleepy Dan. <laughs> That's why they call me Sleepy Dan, I guess. <laughs> put, it, put it on a t-shirt. Um, I, I think there's something to that, though. I think I think part of what is not so great in modern gaming is that sort of like the live service model is so pervasive. Ugh, yeah. You know, like every game wants to be the game that you play. Fortnite wants to be the game that you play. It wants to consume all of the time that you have to play that game. And so, so much of the development and so much of the progression that's in the game is really just masking the fact that they need to keep doing things to keep you interested. So like, here's a cosmetic for you to go get. Well, okay, can I just click on it and 
equip it? No, no, no. You have to go to this other menu where we're going to show you all the other things that you could equip. So you have to look through them because we need you to stay in this game longer because the longer we have your eyes on it, the more likely you are to spend money on it. And like, that's a, that's a fine business strategy, but in terms of an experience that you can have as a human, when you're choosing between video games in a book, video games in a movie, video games in hanging out with your friends, like in the meat space, doing things, uh, it's, 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 it doesn't necessarily always feel good to, to like make that choice. Right. I think, yeah. at least for me. Right. No, I I agree with you entirely. Because I would rather like, if it were given the choice between, you know, playing board games with my friends locally, or playing a video game by myself with no one else around, I would totally play games with my friends. You know, mm -hmm. so I would love to have that meet space interaction. Um, right. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. And I think I think it's not so much of like a. There's something like there is something really special about being in the same place with people, but it's equally that the game isn't even prioritizing the fact that it's a game. It's prioritizing it's attention. Fact, yeah. That it needs more of your, it's that engagement. It needs your engagement. It doesn't need you to have fun. Um, <laughs> the, have you seen the stuff about um, the suicide squad killed the justice league? Mm -mm. No. What is yeah, that? Didn't they like, it sounds like they're delaying it because so many people were pissed. Yeah, basically it was what you were saying is they basically have it was looking like it was going to be one of those sort of uh always on kind like of like always on it's like you have to be connected to the internet it it like you can there's like a battle pass system for this game and, and this like, is this is a rock steady game, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was it's the same people that did the uh, original bat like, the Arkham stuff which mm -hmm. I don't know, we're real good. <laughs> I know I was so bum bummed when uh what was it the like most recent Batman game without uh, Batman Gotham in it Knights. when Gotham Knights wasn't good it just got completely bashed and so I didn't even look into it at all um but I was really actually kind of pumped for that I thought that could be a cool thing to do and and no yeah. it got really got really bad reviews I haven't played it so I can't speak to yeah, it yeah exactly but the but that's kind of like the everyone was like oh it's gonna come out and then it was like. And then a lot of people showed up were just like, mm. yeah, I mean, I was kind of looking forward to it uh, yeah. until I found out about that. So we'll have to see what that, what that is because it's like this games is the game service or games as service. That part of it is not great. I like the game pass. I do like the game pass. What do you mean? The game pass just like as a games as service sort of thing where it's like the, where, you know, you pay a yearly fee and you, get all these games for free. I like that part. Oh, that that yeah. to me is different. That's like it, that feels more like having like a Netflix subscription gotcha. or okay. like a yeah. library card. Okay. What I'm talking about is like games as service is like a game that wants game. to be the service. like Fortnite. Your game. Yeah. Like like Fortnite, yeah. Yeah. It's hard when there's like double XP weekends and I have to figure out I was like, "Oh, got to play Call of Duty this week because it's double XP weekend, but I just really want to play this other thing." Oh, well. I just want to build my Lego Rivendell set. <gasps> it's taking oh did you get the legged you got oh. it oh yeah we is are it awesome uh, so let me just tell you it's three books like nice. oh my the, god it's three books we have spent probably about five hours uh just doing the first book um we the first night we got it we spent an hour and a half and we were like not even halfway through the first book of stuff that we were doing that sounds um, amazing but it is you're really making good. me want to get into lego right now i mean i have I have so many Legos. This is the first. They are the best. This is the first like big Lego set that we've gotten. Um, and it is really cool. Like in the books, it gives you like little like tidbits as you're building it. It's just like, oh, so this piece is normally what you would use for. It was created to be the wheel well of cars. But instead, we're using it as an archway for these windows. They actually tell windows. you that? Yeah. And it's really cool. And then cool. like that's, what, and they'll also like cool. pick out certain parts. They're just like, okay. And this we invented. So it could be like a little hidey hole for Sam before he comes up to do that. And then like, anytime you build like a little Sam? bed, Sam, 
Mr. Frodo. <laughs> um, but it, it is really cool. Like we built, there was like some bookcases that we built and like, why is you're doing it? I'm just like, Oh, it's a bookcase. And then you're like, and you put it together and it's really complicated. It's like your fingers do hurt after a little while of doing it. Oh yeah. Um, but we have been taking pictures while we're doing it. So I'll like start posting like how far we are with stuff. We've been, we finished the like tower section and like Bilbo's study um and uh frodo's bedroom so like where he wakes up after like he gets stabbed by the nargle blade and mm, is uh mm-hmm. and like is revived at rivendell um it's like that room's built bilbo's study where he's working on here uh here there and th- there and back again and there's actually a little book there's a little there and back again book that's Shut in there up. too and it's like you Shut put it in up. i was that's just like oh, it's a book. and it opens and closes like oh it's a little book. Is, i love it is there a little sting Yes. Oh, maybe not. No, there's not. No, I don't know if there's Sting. There's a bunch of swords. I've got a thing that has a bunch of weapons, <laughs> so I don't know if it's in there or not. Is there like a broken uh, yes. uh, uh, Narsil? Yeah, Narsil is there. So there is the blade that was broken. Um, I haven't gotten to that part yet, um, but I have found uh, it makes you you like build all the characters as you're like going through. So I've built Frodo and Sam and Bilbo and Gandalf now. So nice. So many little things. Oh, man. I've I, I, Lord of the Rings things. I, I Marianne and I are like a little bit more than a third of the way through Two Towers together. We nice. read to each other at night. Lord of the Rings. It's oh, that's beautiful. that's Wonderful. adorable. God, you're making me feel bad about. It. <laughs> Hannah goes to bed before I do, and I <laughs> and I put in headphones. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's the, there's you know we do that too. Not, yeah, create any false expectation here. Oh god. When we're when we're reading lord of the rings it's a good time so um i forget what we were talking about before we went into that uh we were we were talking about oh before we went into the uh legos i said something about this i said something about legos and then we got distracted well we were talking about has our taste changed in general that's Mm. that is the thing and you know what let's do go to uh what what i would like to call our final question. Um, oh. Here we go. Um, so our final question. Would you say that... So we... Uh, I'm going to backpedal first. So would you say that you have... Like your taste has changed in the way that you play games? Or like in the games that you play? Excuse me. I would say yes. I, I would say yes too, but maybe subtly. I think really so a lull yes actually no you know i'm thinking way back a a lot no yeah a lot it's changed quite a bit not even a little yes (laughs) no not not a little yes uh but the uh but are you happy about that or are you sad about that Ooh, great question, Dan. Yeah, that's the thing. Does it make you uh, do you do you have a positive outlook on the fact that your taste in games has changed over time, or it has changed a lot, or a little bit, or how how much it has? Do you think that's a positive thing or a negative thing? Chris, you look like you have an answer for me. Uh, I would say, I would say it's it's just kind of how it is, like. <laughs> like i i feel like as i'm getting older like i'm just like not interested as much as the like the intense like like adrenaline rush of of like shooting games and stuff mm, okay. and more just kind of like in more of a relaxing spot so in so classic nice. game brew faction fashion we don't pick a side we just stay right in the middle Dude, that, right that, that fence we're gonna sit right <laughs> we're on gonna top sit right on it there's a nice dan sized butt print on that fence <laughs> it's gonna stay right there <laughs> about I, you? yeah um i think man i don't want to i see I, I laughed when chris said that because that's what i was gonna say but now i feel compelled <laughs> to make a choice no, so that you someone don't, makes because, a choice. no because there's no you don't have to make a choice sometimes the choice is making no choices didn't the Matrix oh. teach us that? Um, I don't <laughs> really. I think the what the Matrix taught us was when the robot apocalypse comes, don't yeah. black out the sun. It's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth. It's not yeah. going to do anything. Just Let's let it figure go. out a way. 
And make sure um, Keanu Reeves is with you, I guess. <laughs> that too. In the um, words of Jurassic Park, life finds a way, you know? I, I believe you forgot. Uh, <laughs> life uh, finds a way. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> life. A very uh, important. Uh, finds a way. Um, yeah, I think, I think in certain ways I'm happy about it. Like, I think having enough respect for my own time to be like, no, you know what? Like, I'm, this is just not having, I'm not having fun with this and that's okay. And I can just put it down and walk away, I think is really important. But I think the, the other side of that sword is I used to, when I was younger or at a time when I had a little bit more leisure time built in, I used to be able to really dig into a certain game. Like I can, re- I remember really fond memories of being a kid and playing, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII, which I mm-hmm. have a whole new set of thoughts about Final Fantasy VII. I would love to share with the public one day. Um, <laughs> Never going to happen now. I've decided. Okay, I'm going to uh, black out anything you ever I say about. I'm like that's a long game, and it wasn't it like is? I beat. The, of course, I beat the game, but like also I had the black chocobo, and you know what else I did? I fought oh. all the ultimate weapons, including oh the ultimate God. ultimate weapon. You know, like <gasps> I did all the things. You know, yeah. And it's really hard for me to do that now because there's always the next thing, and I'm like very ready to be like, if this isn't a great part of this game. I'll just do the next thing. Whereas yeah. I'm sure there is a part. Of Final Fantasy, actually, I know the part of Final Fantasy VII where you're like underneath uh, Midgar, but not in the cool part, in the like yeah. house part with the gym and stuff. Like, man, this is anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but well, I'll get to a slow section and be like, meh, and move on to the next thing. And yes. you, so you, I, I have a hard time having a full experience, right? Um, and that is its own, I think. Uh, I don't want to say failing, but it, that's something that I'm like, well, I kind of miss that. I think, and I think that comes with us, like now that we are a, adults, ugh, um, mostly, mostly, at least physically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mentally, we're all twelve on the inside. Um, but may I never be a day older. <laughs> <laughs> um, girls are icky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two of us are married. One, I'm in a serious relationship. <laughs> oh God, I'm pretty yucky. Uh, but the, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I think like, I think the way that it's changed is the is like the time management is different. It's not the only thing that I have to do. You know, whenever I get home from work, the only thing I have to do isn't go and like play God of War. You know, I did 100 percent God of War Ragnarok, but it's the. <laughs> I but it was because I like I really liked it and I wanted to experience everything, but I didn't like lose time because of it. Again, that same thing, like nine thirty PM, I'd get on and I'd play more of God of War or like in between lessons on Sundays, I I would be able to do that. But mm-hmm. but like I didn't like say I'm gonna spend a twelve hour gaming session today playing God of War Ragnarok. Although I do if there's a game that I know I want to play, I do set that time aside for sure. But you also plan it, which is the difference. You know, the difference is you plan to do that as opposed to being like, Oh, I accidentally played final fantasy 15 for 14 hours yesterday or something like that. But that is, you know, when's the last time you could say you (laughs) you accidentally did that. Right. I I need to go. I'll be right back, guys. I'm just going to write a screed about Final Fantasy games for a second. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So uh, with that, so the answer is a resounding. eh. (laughs) Uh, It's it's high. I think I think from uh, from in general. Um, So if your if your taste changes over time, that's just a thing that happens, you know? Just be happy. I mean, your, your taste buds change every seven years what, or whatever the hell What is. kind of games do you think, Dan, that you'll be playing in 10 years? Uh, the It's like going to be those Ender's Game ones where instead we're accidentally killing, like committing genocide on entire species <laughs> oh of people. <laughs> Casual okay, accidental yeah. genocide. <laughs> wow. That went in place. <laughs> Sorry. No, I don't know. It's hard because I don't know what te- gaming is going to look like in 10 years. It might look the same as it does now. You know, I mean, I mean you're probably going to play the next edition of D and D, maybe or Pathfinder or whatever, maybe something like that. Final Fantasy VII came out in 1997, 1998. I think 1997, I think. ironically. 
Yeah, so 25 years ago-ish, give or take. Yeah. Probably still be playing Skyrim. So so there's still <laughs> RPGs, is what I'm saying, yeah, right? Yeah, there's got to still be RPGs. They'll be different. Like, they took out the whole turn-based thing a long time ago, so there's no Thank more God. turn-based. That's not true. I, like, fucking oh, that's Octopath not true. Traveler is true. Persona? Persona, Persona yeah. yeah, never mind. Uh, I was Pokemon? wrong. I was wrong. Okay, <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> Okay, okay, so what kind of games do you think you're going to be playing in 10 years, Dan? Probably whatever the current season of Fortnite is. <laughs> <laughs> to Fair be enough. honest. Yeah. To be honest, you know? So, um, but, you know, with the, with that being said, in 10 years, who knows what we're going to be playing, but at least we'll be playing stuff. At hope, least we'll you be know? playing Skyrim. <laughs> at least we'll be playing Skyrim still. <laughs> It'll come out on our PlayStation 12. Um, <laughs> don't ask why there's uh why there are sev- seven iterations of playstation <laughs> between now and it's a really bad they got some really happening. bad ones in there uh, <laughs> so uh so with that we're going to go to the close of our podcast portion of tonight's festivities which uh, uh with this um we are going hannah. to hi hannah hi um <laughs> so <laughs> love you How what are her giving? pants are those are those are those cup pants there are snow globes on the pants um oh. snow globe pants um but uh as i was saying i'm so sorry we're gonna go to the close of our podcast <laughs> which usually uh this is where we talk about things we want to plug ian do you have anything you want to plug uh yeah i want to plug um taking care of yourself go take care of yourself all you people out there do something that makes you feel good and then uh after you do that like eat some vegetables and go for a walk and hug your person all right i love it i do love it the positivity is great uh in that <laughs> yeah eat a eat a vegetable for christ's sake <laughs> yeah. uh touch some grass <laughs> yeah yeah truly <laughs> truly uh chris do you have anything you want to plug uh spay and neuter your pets all right thank spay you. And neuter. for it. real though but, like yeah i can't it. believe how people are so responsible with their pets thank you chris <laughs> that's, that's all right welcome we are all responsible with our pets welcome to the middle been... age advice podcast <laughs> 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 all right uh and then i'm gonna get to the the so the things for the show so we, this is the game brew podcast you are listening to this on a uh or watching it on twitch if you're listening to it please remember to uh like the podcast give us a rating um if you love the podcast it really does help if you are uh, watching us on twitch tell your friends tell your moms tell your mom's friends uh to watch us on sundays at seven um and uh we are usually here uh, and if we're not, watch an old one. I don't know. Um, the, <laughs> uh, you can uh, follow all of our social medias at The Game Brew if you want to. You can also uh, pl- join our Discord. We talk about stuff in there. Um, it's bit.ly slash disco brew, D I S C O B R E W. Um, and speaking of Disco Brew, uh, buh, drum roll, buh, crash. Uh, so the <laughs> next, the next episode of the game view podcast thank you uh the next episode of the game view podcast which will be will be broadcasting next week um will be uh we will be watching oh no i forgot what it's called warcraft Warcraft. the warcraft movie (laughs) so uh everyone loved that people liked it i think it was not not everyone loved it it was like (laughs) it it was like our podcast people were just kind of like okay this exists um (laughs) Um, so the uh, so that is what we're watching. If you would like to watch it in the next in the next week, uh, and then you can participate in the conversation either in uh, in the chat. If you would like to be a guest on the Game View podcast, please let us know, and you can. Vi- it's very possible. Um, <laughs> uh, just uh, just to let you know, it let will, us know. any movie is better than Blood Rain. So. Any At movie least. is better. What is Blood Rain? A oh, terrible movie. That it's you a terrible never movie. Watch. Do not watch it. Whatever you do, do not watch this movie. You're making me want to watch it so bad right <laughs> I know now. I am, it's, but it's, don't. <laughs> the feeling that you want to watch it so bad is equal to how bad that movie is. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, God. Oh, that's great. Um, so, uh, yes. And if you haven't, if you want to listen to our Game View podcast of Blood Rain, that will be out tomorrow, uh, Monday, the 20th. Um, so. Please don't, Ian. <laughs> Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, we're going to end the podcast now the way that we always end the podcast, which is by saying good night, everybody. everybody.